It allows you to commune with the Creator. Now, newage garbage, Bible doctrine. The only thing that allows you to commune with your Creator is the mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. It's not this little peanut-sized organ in the center point of your brain. It's That's not it. Folks, the doctrines that are creeping into the mainstream churches right now are nothing but doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. These words right here, it allows you to commune with the Creator. That's what you hear everywhere. We're going to commune with God. That's what community is all about. We're communing with one another. And as we commune with God, and for some reason, Jesus is left out of the equation. Anyway, but wait, there's more. The article goes on to say, The pineal gland plays an important role in the regulation of our sleeping patterns and consequently our dream time incursions. This gland is responsible to produce two hormones, melatonin and DMT. The pineal gland produces the mystical anti-aging secretions that preserve life. (coughs) Stop right here. Genesis chapter 3. The serpent, remember, you know, he's the guy at the base of your spine. The serpent said, um, Ye shall not surely die. The elixir of life, the holy grail, the fountain of youth, all of these concepts play into this idea of immortality of mankind so long as the pineal gland is activated. Let's, let's look on. Uh, Let's see here. Melatonin is essential for our sleep-wake cycle and peaks in the middle of the night when uh, we are in our deepest stages of REM sleep. Um, DMT is structurally similar to melatonin. The biochemical precursor to both molecules is serotonin, a key neurotransmitter whose conduits are involved in mood and targeted in the treatment of psychiatric disorders. Um, DMT, which is dimeth... Dimethyltryptamine, dimethyltryptamine, got it, also structurally resembles other psychedelic drugs such as LSD um, and psilocybin and is the active agent in the ayahuasca brews the Amazon shamans used to provoke uh, out-of-body experiences. I'm, let me stop right here. Let me, let me share with you what my beautiful daughter uh, shared with me. Dad, she said, you need to get this. Melatonin, that's what's produced by your, your pineal gland. Melatonin, she said, Dad, it's called the hormone of darkness. When you, when you, as you go throughout the day, your body, we did a video called The Cycles of Christian Growth and somebody emailed me uh, yesterday or today and said, man, that, that, just, that teaching just got, it saved my life is what it did because everything we do goes in cycles and God ordained it that way. You're not going to be good all the time, so quit acting like it. Uh, but anyway, um, anyway, as the day goes on and night comes you see there's something uh, boy, I'm, I want to get ahead of myself here there's that little gland inside the center of your brain in the very core of your brain called the pineal gland um, light that's going through your eyes when the lights dim the uh, pineal gland starts secreting amounts of melatonin melatonin is what makes you at about 9 30 10 o'clock at night go Oh man, I'm getting. I bet some of you just yawned just now. Oh man, I'm getting. I'm getting sleepy. I, 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 I think I'm going to turn in for the night. And you lay down. You shut the lights off in your in your room, or blow the lantern out. And and all of a sudden, there's darkness around. And then the pineal gland really starts kicking into gear here, and it increases its amount of melatonin up until about the, the mid part of your sleep cycle. Now, if you sleep six hours or eight hours, it's going to be the midpoint of that. And then when it, when it reaches the midpoint, then it kind of starts backing down a little bit and secreting less and less so that at, toward morning, you're, you're waking back up. And the melatonin is eliminated. It's, uh, you know, you excrete it out and it's gone. And then the cycle is going to begin the next day. Now, she, she said, Dad, she said, listen to this light turns it off 
Okay, the the pineal. Listen to this. The pineal gland reacts to light in such a way. She said that's why if you get up in the middle of the night and you go to the bathroom, don't turn the bathroom light on, because that, it, that shuts it down and you'll have a hard time going back to sleep. And I'm going. My daughter's a genius. My daughter is a genius. <laughs> Not really, uh, but anyway. And I'm just going. Wow. And I'm thinking about. All of the biblical aspects of this, because get this, the pineal gland they say has got to be activated. They say that it's going to bring you an awakening, but in reality, what it does is puts you to sleep. They say that it's going to give you light, but in reality, the way God designed it, it's activated by darkness. They say it's going to bring you illumination and awakening, but that's not what it's doing. It's doing the exact opposite of that. God, Satan. King James, New King James. Okay? Same thing. Uh, King James Bible, morals and dogma. Okay? Same thing here. Um... Wow, I, I, even now, as I'm sharing this, I'm blown away. Now, here's, here's, here's why I'm saying all this in relation to this imagery that Michelangelo drew. See, I kind of knew about the pineal gland. I kind of I got that here a while back. And I kind of knew where it was on, in, the, in the human brain. And uh, I got to looking at Michelangelo's painting again of God being a God and the woman being inside this brain and all these little demons, these little angels, naked babies, um, being a picture of the human mind, okay, and what brings illumination. And boy, I tell you what, I, I hated the fact that I did this, but I started trying to figure out where, in relation to this brain that Michelangelo drew, where the pineal gland would be. And I'm going to I'm going to show you that image. Take a look. You see, in all the mystery cults, they always worship the phallus. The phallus is everything. Uh, you remember the promise keepers. Um, there was a book that was given out to all the promise keepers men. Um, uh, had something to do with manhood or something like that. And basically, the whole book was written in a Christian quote unquote context about the phallus, the phallic Jesus. You'll never understand Jesus without understanding the phallus. And, and I'm going, what in the. There's a preoccupation in the mystery occult religions with the phallus. And I I'm believe with all my heart. And now, if you don't say, oh, pass the mic, you know. Get you, go to Photo Bucket or Flickr or just Google the image of the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican and what's, what's out in the front yard of it. It's a big giant obelisk. It's the phallus. The phallus of the god, Osiris, the sun god. So here we have Osiris, the pineal god, pineal gland, being really that imagery there around his girlfriend, Shekinah, giving illumination to the new man. That's what this is all about. I, I think Michelangelo knew exactly what he was doing. Now, I'm going to give you some scriptures now. We're going to, we're going to show you the truth of what's really going on. When they talk about awakening, that's not what they're talking about. When they talk about light and illumination, that's not what they're talking about. When they're talking about the God that is at the center point of you, they're talking about that serpent reaching your pineal gland, making you go to sleep. That's what they're talking about.